181 and 108 is his record. You look over at George Suggs. Impressive resume he's put together. Just his second year as a head coach. 36 and 24 and already in the regional finals. This McKendry squad, they have got a lot of promise. Here's the opening tip. Cisse gets it with ease. As you can imagine, he's got a few inches on Zerlini. And it'll be Umsel with a chance to strike first. Want them to look for their big guys. Fuller, look for him to get the first shot off. Instead of a first shot, we'll have a first foul. As that one comes early in this one on the Bearcats, the eight-seeded McKendry Bearcats against number two in the Umsel Tritons. But I like the early offense. Isaiah Fuller hasn't shot a three all tournament here in this Midwest Regional. He got the first touch on the block and he went to work. Well, he can if he wants to. A 41% three-point shooter is Isaiah Fuller. Here's our first look at Victor Wabarocha backing down his defender. And look at that. Nice little fadeaway off Carson Parker. Yeah, he's really able to take advantage of that, that matchup. Not, you know, not the greatest defender on him. And he scored, he's, he scored 32 points in the three games against McKendry the first three times this year. Gonna be a big part of their offense today, I think. One of three players in double figures here for this squad. Sanquist and Fuller being the other two. Here's a quick turnover. The ball's on the ground and Cisse's got it. Wabarocha on a three-on-three. Three. He's going to look to go right to the cup, and he can't get it to fall. That Rebound was, from Zerlini. And that was good defense. Vicentic got back and was able to alter that shot in transition. Wabarocha went strong. Swing around. Ooh. Ball goes out of bounds. That'll be Triton basketball. And already you can see the defense picking up Umsol. They hold the Bearcats to... Limited scoring already a couple early turnovers the defense is playing the passing lanes and you can see the arms up Here's a screen from Cisse he'll get the ball He's been playing a few good games on the inside Isaiah Fuller team's best player launches one up and it's way off target Cisse gets the board Second chance points he got him and Cisse is going to have a chance today. I mean, he didn't start that first game of the year against McKendry, but in the first and the other two games, he combines for 22 points, 22 rebounds, four blocks, three steals in just two games against the Bearcats. If he can get some looks today. How about this? A three off the bat. McKendry's going to get their first points from it. Milos Vicentic. And that might be the MVP of this Midwest Regional. He is playing absolutely outstanding here, Nathaniel. He is just electrifying player. Lights out from anywhere across half court. How about these two teams? Talked about their prowess shooting threes as Enright's going to come up for a layup and misses it with the left hand. Board goes to Boltman. Both these teams coming off incredible three-point performances in these regional semifinal games as Boltman's going to work on the inside. Sees the double team. Launches one up, and that'll be a turnover. Umsel 12 of 23. That's 52% from downtown in that win against Ferris State. And McKendry got their win against Northern Michigan, shooting 46% from downtown. Made 10 threes. Very impressive numbers. For Umsel, they're going to start with trying to get some points in the paint first. Can't again. Great interior defense by Vicentic. I think he... You know, might have came down over the top, but the whistle doesn't blow. Credit to Vicentich with the defense. Here's Boltman backing down Fuller. Sees a wide open Carson Parker who lays it in. And suddenly McKendry an early lead. And how about this? Boltman, that's his 172nd assist on the year. He has just dished the ball with ease. He's had seven plus assists seven times this year. Call him Magic Johnson. Maybe not quite that good. I see your point, though. Yep. He can really dish the ball out so well as Wabaroach is going to work on Boltman. And right from downtown, the left-hander buries it. That's one thing he, he really hasn't done well. His numbers are down from three just now. 33% on the year was about 38% earlier on this season and now starting to go down and right, finding some confidence with an early three. Powell sees the tough perimeter defense, has to kick it out. Vicentich, oh, he thought about a three instead, kicks it out. Here is Zerlini, team's best defender. Instead, Boltman will take it from three, and he's off the mark. Vicentich, a couple unlucky breaks there. 
but nice defense by Cisse running him off the three-point line. is going to have his hands full, but that's what you got to do. Mid-range J, it's good. That's a pretty one. And Isaiah Fuller is, you know, a really, really good two-point shooter. Shoots above, uh, just above, just actually below 50% on the season from two now. But he is very good looking for those long twos. He shoots the ball with ease, and he's found some confidence here as of late as well. Look at that move on the inside. Bryson Boltman starting to heat up. Yeah, already Boltman with a couple takes towards the basket. That's his first make, but he scored in double figures all but four times this year. Boltman really knows how to score the ball. Reverse layup. It's good from Fuller. Credit Cisse for the assist and the high five there. Another guy that knows how to score the ball in the three games against McKendry. 70 points combined also 17 rebounds and 11 assists but he's also shot the ball extremely well he was 30 for 61 combined field goal attempts just below 50 percent Boltman shakes off a great nice defender cut. and gets it blocked they're going to say a blocking foul instead though on Enright beautiful two-man game Vicentich and Boltman there off the pick and roll they were able to get behind Fuller with the early job crashing the glass that's helped them get out in transition but McKendry really needs to turn on their offense here. The defense is working, but the offense being slowed down by this try and D. Nice look there from Bryson Boltman, who hits the first. Boltman so far this year, 79% free throw shooter. He's accustomed to doing just that, hitting both of them. And he hasn't missed a free throw yet this tournament. 10 for 10. Make it 12 for 12 now. McKendry can retake the lead here. Or at the very least tie it on this possession. We see Luke Kensler enter the game for the first time after that media timeout as well as Alexander Devitkov. Vicentic on the inside has to kick it out. Here's a three for the lead. No, Ooh. it rolls out. Would have loved to see that one go down. It was a nice look. Boltman just could not get it to fall. The lid on the basket for McKendry right now. Vicentich and Boltman both rimming out shots on back-to-back -back drives. Now you see an offensive foul. Moving screen. That's Umpsel's first turnover. One thing that they have done extremely well against McKendry this year in the three games, just seven, five, and nine turnovers. But on Sunday... Against Ferris State, 14 of them. They really need to take care, better care of the ball if they want to have a chance. Both teams a bit of a higher turnover output in those semifinal games. And, you know, for McKendry, they allowed Northern Michigan to get back in the game. Big part was to their three-point shooting and an incredible performance there. They saw 34 points, incredible 34 points from Max Bjorklund. Allowed them to get back in the game. Here's Vickers, a long three. He's a little too strong on that one. Good to see him back in the game, though. How about Donovan Vickers? 20 points in just 22 minutes against Ferris State on Sunday. An 8 for 13 from behind the arc in the two games he's played in this tournament. He's really shooting the ball with confidence. Just couldn't find that first one. Boltman reverse layup. How about that? Not only avoided the baseline, but then he did a great job to lay it in. He's been kind of neutralized in the two games here in the tournament he's only scored 10 and 15 points against UND and Northern Michigan respectively but here really looking for a shot early already shot the ball four times he's got four he's got six points Fuller another mid-range J he's an expert at those and he's got six early points Here's a three, wide open. Bryson Boltman's going to hit those nine times out of ten when it's a practice shot. Shows you why he's first team all conference, really making his name known. He's going to have his fingerprints all over this game if they come out on top. It's going to go down as one of the better McKendry players in the Bearcats' history. 
Been in Division II just since 2012 when they reclassified. First time that they're in the tournament. Ooh. Missing that look. That'll set up a fuller three, though. There's his first one of this tournament. And he absolutely buries it. Guy who shoots above 40% from three just doesn't settle for threes. That's what I really, really like about his game. He doesn't settle, gets inside, gets to his spots, and, you know, makes defenders pay. That time just left wide open. Vicentich drives inside. Hook shot, but it's off the mark. Tell you what, we've already seen four early lead changes today. Safe to say we're going to see a few more before the conclusion of this one. Bowler's going to bring up a screen, calls it from Cordobom, and uses it to perfection, except he can't finish at the cup. How about that? Boltman responds and ties it up. And already 11 points. Bryson Boltman doing an outstanding job getting to his spots. On the other end, Janir Harris gets fouled. Put him at the line for the three-point opportunity. Let's take a look at this. Harris is a guy that can be one of the no limitations on his game these last two days and it's been impressive to see what he's able to put together for Boltman first player to hit double figures this game does so before we even hit double figure minutes he has been impressive so we see here Junior Harris finishes off the three point play like we mentioned Boltman in double figures all but four times this year 20 plus points nine times and he scored over 30 twice Here he's looking for a shot again. Nice defense. Great defense there. That's what we're going to see from the number three defense in the GLVC, giving up just 66 points per game. The Tritons, they know how to get it done on the defensive side of the ball. Here's Boltman on the drive. Harris bumps him. Let's see if they call that on the floor. They will. We're talking about, you know, Bob Sunvold. He just breeds defensive players. I know we, we talked about it off air a little bit, Nathaniel, and in previous games this tournament, but the last four GLVC players of the year have been in the Triton uniform. And there they get a great defensive play on cue. Transition three, no. The rebound for Hayden Meeks. Watch Vickers. He's 0 of 3 to start, 0 of 2 from downtown, but he won't stop looking for his shot. Never loses confidence. And another guy that's not going to lose confidence, Eric Powell the second. He didn't miss a shot on Sunday. He was 8 for 8, 24 points, Nathaniel. Has yet to take one today, though. He'll be sent to the line for a couple chances at the charity stripe. But what a player he has been here. You know, finished the season 20th in the conference in scoring, but he's been putting together some great games here of late. And his dad, Eric Powell, the first in the stands watching him, cheering him on. Obviously, Powell, a senior, played three years at Asbury University, grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, but you know he is an outstanding player. See Donovan Vickers brings the ball up as the point guard right now. Giving Isaiah Fuller a bit of a break on the bench. Bob Rocha, it's been a quiet day for him. Vickers does not get a lot of breaks. Good to see him sitting some time out. He'll be asked to pawn the to play a lot later. Miss three, Vickers gets the long board, steps up and misses that one as well. This team, they've missed quite a few shots here now. He's taken four shots, Vickers. He left all of them short. I hate to see if he's, you know, losing that power in his legs, but maybe fatigue could be an issue for Vickers. Yeah, it becomes an issue for all these teams, not only playing all three oh, yeah. games in the GLVC tournament, but playing all three games here in the regional tournament. They're not going to get much rest. That's something that McKendry's head coach had said. You know, with George Suggs said that all the way back after the first quarterfinal game, he says, hey, we just got done playing back to back to back days in the GOBC yep. tournament, right? Well, now at least they got one day yeah. off. They, they, got a, they got a break yesterday before coming in today, but you still, it starts to add up on your legs. And even though both these teams are playing so much time, so many minutes on, you know, all these guys' legs, you'll love to see just a moment ago, 
the hustle by both sides. You can tell both these teams want it because their guys are first to the floor. That's that's one thing that I've noticed calling both of these game, both of these teams' games is they're always first to the ground. It'll be interesting to see who wins those 50-50 balls today. It's also something we see with these games. It's you know everyone's diving for those balls. Everyone's going all out, and we see an example oh. there. It gets blocked by Cisse. Zerlini on the wrong end of it. Inside to Cisse. Spins around on the inside, and he loses it. He's fouled. Carson Parker commits it. And again, Cisse can just really take advantage of, of that matchup. I mean, I don't think that... Uh, Carson Parker should have been matched up on him, but you know anybody on the floor right now. Meeks is playing the five. Cisse can, you know, put any of these guys in the weight room. Too short on that one. Probably gonna see that a lot more at this juncture of the tournament as well, right? Yeah, doesn't shoot free throws particularly well. Just eight for twenty-nine on the year. A little bit below twenty percent from there. But if he knocks him down, you know, I mean, you got an issue. Cisse can definitely draw some fouls pretty often when he gets inside. Oh, yeah. He splits the pair there. UND was really able to neutralize Cisse on, on Saturday, but Ferris State could not on Sunday. He could be another one of those X factors for the, the golden, golden jerseys. The feed inside here is Zerlini. Working on Wabarocha off the glass. How about that? It's a one-point game. Zerlini, you're used to seeing him on the defensive end, but looking for a shot on the offensive end. Nice back down move there, and he was able to take advantage of that mismatch, get one to go. It's been a quiet start for Bowen Sandquist yet to attempt a shot today. Look for him to start getting hot at some point in this game. Team's best three-point shooter. Wabarocha, Bowler's back in the game. Talked about how important he'll be earlier. Look at that move from the freshman, but he can't finish. And Nathaniel, you saw on that drive in right, Eric Powell was guarding either in right or Sanquist right. How about Suggs, a graduate of Bellarmine in 2016? No stranger to tournament success. Bellarmine, these squads before they moved up to Division One, they were making a late postseason run seemingly every single year. Yeah, and I mean, Suggs, that's so important having a guy on the bench because, you know, none of these players on the Bearcats and the purple jerseys have had any NCAA tournament experience. Having a guy in George Suggs who can give you some of that experience and coach you up on the bench, he knows what it takes, and the Bearcats are, are really taking what he's given them and absolutely produced with it. You send Titch on the inside. He'll kick it out and set up a little floater. Foul there as Parker took a bit of a shot attempting to control that one. Cisse has been enormous in the paint today. His rim protection is really giving Vicentich some problems. They've been able to hold him in check. Just three points today for, for Milos. And he's only hasn't really looked for a shot as well. He's only knocked down one three-pointer. He's one for three from the field. Able to neutralize him. Trying to get the impressive feed instead, just out of reach. Carson Parker can't corral it. Wabarocha to inbound. And I love Bryson Boltman says, my bad there. Obviously, it was a poor pass, and Carson Parker knows that as well, but there's no time for you know teammates to get mad at each other this heavy of stakes. Here is Cisse spinning around Vicentic and gets a nice look there. Gets the best of the other team's best. And again, Cisse now five points. Gives Umsol their three-point lead. He's also, also crossed, crashed the boards with those four rebounds. Nice defense again, Cisse. Everywhere. On both ends of the floor, he has been playing his tail off. How about that? And another turnover. McKendry will get it. Give him his first steal today. 
You know, and Drew Cisse, a guy who came over from San Diego City College, had played a much bigger role last year, but he comes on he comes in under Bob Sunville with these Tritons and takes some more of a back seat, but they're winning. How about that floater? Look at that. What else can you do against Isaiah Fuller? What a player. Nathaniel, we have seen some incredible shot making by all the teams here in the Midwest Regional. Fuller the biggest part of that. Vicentich had a tough look, couldn't connect, and think of the ball here to Luke Hensler. Haven't seen anything yet from Eric Powell, aside from a free throw. Here's Boltman too strong. Ball heads out of bounds. That's been a matchup problem so far. Vicentich and Cisse, they've been really, that those inches that Cisse has on Milos has they, been trouble. They count for a mile, for sure. Vicentich against Kendrick Choa. You know, on uh, on Saturday for Uindy, he was able to take advantage of very, very well. Really neutralized the conference's best player in Kendrick Choa. Here's Wabarocha, lays it in. Wide open, gut on the inside. And it's just been a nice little run here for Umsel after the last scoreless three minutes for McKendry. And then Vicentich against Hazleton for Ferris State. The Bulldogs on, on Sunday, he scored 31. Woo! To break the 6-0 run. It's an and one. And that, Eric Powell, he has to be a guy that can hold the ball in his hands and be a matchup problem for this Triton defense. When he is clicking on all cylinders like he was as he was on Sunday, he can add a level of scoring that the Bearcats aren't used to getting, and he could put, the, he could put them over the edge today. Eric Powell, the second from the free throw line. As Eric Powell, the first watch is on down in the stands. Been here all tournament. Cuts it to a four-point game. Here's a wide open look from the corner. Wabarocha too strong. Neither of these teams able to hit many threes. 38% from downtown for Wabarocha on the year, but he's 0 of 2 to start. Wide open from straightaway three, and that one's even off the mark. How about both teams, two of six from downtown? And some nerves for both teams. You can, you can see, I mean, you can tell a lot of first-time Midwest Regional finalists here. The only one that hasn't, Isaiah Fuller. The whistle blows as Wabarocha tries to go to the cup, and he'll be sent to the line for a couple. And talking about Isaiah Fuller again, you know, I love to see him already Really, you know, being aggressive, getting to the hole and looking for a shot. Seven field goal attempts already and, you know, 11 points. Isaiah Fuller in the first game on Saturday, 26 points. Um, and then in the second game on Sunday, just nine points. So really took a back seat and let some other guys take advantage. Bowen Sanquist, one of them. But the Tritons know how to step up big when guys aren't feeling it. Sanquist is cold to start. Has zero points, hasn't even tried a shot yet. Isaiah Fuller picking up right where he left off. Donovan Vickers, another guy who's been cold to start. Wabarocha, he'll hit both of them. Six early points for him. He's been big, averaging 11 points and four boards in the other three games against McKendry. Again, the fourth time these guys are playing. That just does not happen very often, but they met in the conference tournament. McKendry got the best of them. They're meeting here, and they split the regular season series. Boltman fade away. That's a tough shot. Are you kidding me? Boltman is doing everything right now for McKendry. He's what's kept them in the game. 13 early points. It's still the Bearcats trail by four. Need somebody to help him out. Wabarocha from the corner. Going to back down Hayden Meeks. Definitely Wabaroch has got the advantage. Fades away and too short. Meeks has the size, though. Umsel fans wanted a foul. I'm not sure where, though. All he was doing was backing down. Meeks was holding his ground. Well, they're not going to like that one. Janir Harris gets caught. 
A little too physical on that loose ball. You can tell that you're tenured when you don't have to wear a suit to the yeah. regional finals in the Sweet 16. Wearing the quarter zip. Nice and comfortable there on the sideline as he's looking for his 182nd win in these 10 seasons. Here's Milos Vicentic. It's his first. Boy, has he been incredible from the foul line so far in this tournament. I mean, just last game alone, 8 of 8 from that foul line. Make it 12 for 12 for the tournament. Vicentic hasn't missed one. Vickers, Devit Cove with a tough defense. This will set up Wabarota. Tough drive, and he has to kick it out. Great defense from the Bearcats. Fade away. How wow. about that? I don't know if there's anything you could have done better if you're Hayden Meeks, but Fuller still gets it in. Uh, that's, that's great defense, but just better offense. Incredible shot making. Fuller's done that a couple times now. That fadeaway elbow jumper making it look easy. Are you kidding me? That one's not easy. It's a deep three, and it rolls around. Vicentic, well, he's human. Here's Wabarocha. Oh, he definitely could have taken the three if he wanted. Instead, Fuller loses it and is fouled. Meeks picks up one. I think Fuller definitely got away with the travel there. As he caught that on the wing, he started to move towards the basket before he dribbled. But, you know, obviously, got to get lucky every once in a while. The next common foul will result in free throws for either team as Umsel one more foul away from being in the bonus. But first, we'll have to toss it in from the baseline. That's Vickers. Gets it in to Fuller. Isaiah Fuller, the best Triton, gets fouled again. And now we'll see him at the line for a one on one. How about this Umsel team? I mean, we talked about how they were in the Elite Eight last season, right? So they won this game, moved on. Graduated four all-conference players. Five of their starters are gone. There's only two players that are, you know, on this roster from last season. Front end is in. Yeah, those two players, Isaiah Fuller and, and Trevor Moore, a lot of the guys in the gold jerseys transferring over from from other teams, Matt and Wright, and a couple a couple freshmen like and Wright, but several of the guys transferring over from from other teams and picking up right where this Triton team left off from from that 2021-2022 campaign, getting back to another regional final. Trying to put a little bit of separation between these two teams as Umsels. He hit that one. Yeah, it was Umpsel in this game a year ago. Like I said, they actually lost to Hillsdale, so their season ended in the Sweet 16. Lost by 10 there, and definitely not trying to repeat that for McKendry. This is all new for them. Never been in the NCAA tournament. But going back to that Midwest Regional Final from last year, they're playing much better defense here against McKendry. They forced already eight turnovers by the Bearcats. Powell gets a steal. A turnover on the other end. I was going to say they've taken be much better care of the ball, but as soon as I would have said that, they turned the ball over. Parker on the inside, double team. Nice feed to Vic Cove, gets on the board. Has not been able to do that hardly at all this tournament or the GLVC tournament, but Alexander DeVic Cove from Belgrade, Serbia. Same with Milos Vicentic. He hits that one in. No, that, and he hasn't, but... What you just watched, folks, is McKendry basketball. The ball movement, cutting, off-ball screens, David Cove to the bucket. Love to see it. He had 18 assists in that semifinal game on Sunday. Look Trying out. to go coast to coast. He'll get fouled. Nothing called it. They said it was all ball on the other end. Not sure I agree with that one. Now Fuller pulls up on the runner, and he hits it. Instead of a foul that could have been called on the other end, Umsel capitalizes and puts the ball through the hoop. It's a six-point lead for the Triton. Here's the inbound McKendry. 50 seconds to work with to try to cut into this deficit before they head to the locker room.
Trying to take some of the time off the clock. Here's Vickers running the one right now for the squad. 10 seconds between the clocks. Mason Cordelbaum on the inside, kicks it out. Five to shoot, looking for the best shot. Fuller takes it from three. The bank's not open for him. They have 10 seconds here. Vicentich, he's got all the urgency. Powell just hit a buzzer beater at the last half time he played. Here's a, attempted another one and it's awry. He misses his first shot in the last few minutes. That'll bring us to the score we have now, 34 to 28. How about that first half, Graham? Yeah, it was an really able to score. If the Tritons can repeat that second half, I know obviously scoring wise, but if they can repeat the defensive half that they just had, then they're going to come out regional champions. Elms are doing a great job getting points in the paint, and they're not settling for too many threes. Of course, neither of these teams really hitting much from downtown, but Elms are just doing a better job inside. I think that's why they've got this lead. Both these crowds had to drive about three hours east on I-70 to get here as we see a slam off the opener just like Coach Suggs drew it up for Caleb Zerlini. Awesome pass, awesome finish, great play for their first possession of the half. That should get them some momentum if they can continue to run plays like that. Wabarocha. Working on the inside on Boltman. Tries to turn around. Tough shot, and he can't. Gets his own board, though. It's a long one. And the awareness by Cisse able to, able to tap that one out. That three goes awry from Fuller, and the Bearcats will control it. I mean, two of nine from downtown now for Umsel. Not quite how they drew it up coming into this one. Boltman on the inside looking for some points in the paint, and he can't. Fuller gets the board. Tough defense. Here's Drew Cisse working on Vicentich, and he got it. Didn't wow. even have to look God. at that one go in. How about that? Woo. Behind the back, little <laughs> no-look shot like you, like you said, Nathaniel. That was impressive, to say the least. Tough shot. Good finish. Boltman, nice feed. Here's Zerlini, double teamed and it's stolen away. No whistle, Wabarocha got it. And that's McKendry's game. Boltman with the pass, Zerlini, but great defense by the Tritons. The transition, transition J is no good. Ward goes to Zerlini and now Vicentich pulls up from the right wing and maybe a little too ambitious. He has got to find a way to get some kind of offensive rhythm. Just five points for him. He's coming off two straight games where he hit his career high, 26 against UND. And he had over 30 in that win on Sunday. But here, I mean, he's he's being held in check. It's been very impressive. Look at a couple shots here. Well, instead, they're gonna they're gonna inbound it. And to that point though, Vicentich, I would rather him I would rather see him try and get to his spot around the paint. He works much better closer to the rim. Sanquist, the three-point specialist, hits his first layup of the game. It's his first two points. He's been quiet. But that's exactly how you get going. If you don't have a shot going from the outside, take it to the bucket. Parker to the bucket, and he's fouled. Some good takes by the Bearcats here to start this half. Impressive to see, and I like what I'm seeing on the offensive side. Much better than the first half, where they shot nine threes, only hit two of them. Same for... You know, Missouri St. Louis, they shot eight threes in the first half. They were two for eight. Now they're two for nine. They've matched the Bearcats in, in that category. But Parker trying to uh, score a couple points, takes it to the bucket, draws the foul. Nice offense. Just under 70% from the line. He averages this season coming off a 5.5 rebound, four assist game. Good all-around player for this squad. And there he misses both of them. Can't have that. He's missed some free throws this, this tournament. Carson Parker, in the last game, he was three for six, six for seven on Saturday. Pull up, long two, and he got it. I mean, he can hit from anywhere on the floor. All smiles for Isaiah Fuller. Now 19 points in the largest lead of the day for Umsel. McKendry, how will you counter? He had a good play here. Boltman chucks it up. 
can't get the whistle that he was looking for and he sets up a five on four it's stolen away thrown here's Boltman what a crazy sequence to the cup and he misses it Humsel gets the board what a crazy couple possessions now Fuller on the inside too short Ball goes out of bounds. We'll see who they call it on. That's a tough one. They say it's McKendry. You know, and you might say some sloppy play, but I mean, this is this is basketball where, you know, these 50-50 balls, which Umsel seems to be winning all of them right now, is going to win them this game if they continue to do so and McKendry stays this cold. A 10-point lead. been the biggest lead of the day so far. McKendry going to try to make this a seven-point lead. Gotta have Boltman it. can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've just been ice cold since that dunk. And open shots like that is ways to get yourself rhythm and some momentum on offense, get the ball going through the net. But still can't find any shots, can't buy a bucket if you're the Bearcats. I think they just need to get it on the inside, get in the paint. To Milos Vicentic, he's your best player in this tournament. Just continue to get it to him. Wow. They try to get it around it, but Enright can't hit, and instead goes out of bounds. It'll be Umsel possession. That'll bring us to the under 16 media timeout. And what a crazy four minutes coming out of the break. Matt Enright once a year. This is game number quite a bit for all these guys. They each played once in the regular season, and obviously this is their third one. In this tournament, they they are used to playing in this arena at this point, and I mean, who would have thought that two GLVC teams will be playing in the Midwest region? I don't know how many times that happens with so many great GMAC and GLIAC squads. Boltman tried to control it, but instead gets stolen away. Here's the first three of the game for Sandquist, and he can't get it to go. Gets a second chance from the logo. Sandquist again misses, but he's shooting with a, with. He's shooting it with confidence. That's all you want to see. Boltman inside, double team. They get the best of him. Cisse gets the board. He has had some struggles finishing around the rim. He's now 5 for 15 from the field. He's not got his 13 points extremely efficiently. And credit that to the great defense by Umsel around the basket and the rib protection by Drew Cisse. Fuller to the cup. He lays it in off the glass. And one thing Umsel... Pardon, McKendry is lacking. Is that rim protection? Vicentich has not been able to do it, and no other Bearcat, including Zerlini, has either. Cisse picks up his second foul of the contest. How about his game? Just seven points, but he's got six rebounds, two assists. McKendry's going to have the ball and trying to cut into a 12-point lead for Umsel. It was the Bearcats on Sunday who had a 24-point advantage in their game against Northern Michigan. Saw it go all the way back down within a bucket. Here's a pull-up from the free throw line. That's just not, that's not Vicentich's game. You want to see him go all the way to the cup and use that size that he has. Six foot seven, 220 pounds. And I think the biggest part of CSA has just been able to be physical with him, pushing those elbows and Vicentich has not been able to get inside to that paint. Vickers adds to the poor shooting day for Umsel from three. Two of 12 now from downtown, and now a foul on a loose ball. It's going to go. Looks like against Bryson Boltman. Nothing working for McKendry right now. This is the part of the game. You still have plenty of time. Just trailing by 12, but you need to force some stops here on defense what does George Suggs do he draws up that full court press they're going to pick them up the length of the floor but on offense you have to find something that works but you can't settle for threes just continue to push the paint and try and look for your shots inside continue to go to Vicentich because sooner rather than later he's going to turn things on another foul heavy whistles here and right now a word the referee not happy with what George Suggs is saying. You see he's getting a little heated in there. You talk about what they need to do. That's exactly what they shouldn't have done. Davidkov has to know that crossing that half-court line, Vickers is, you know, such a skilled player. He's a veteran who knows how to draw fouls, and 
The Vitkov has to be smarter than that. Pull up from the free throw line. That's a pretty touch from Janir Harris. Juco transfer. Didn't play from the 7th of January all the way until that GLVC tournament. Good to see he's back healthy and playing some great minutes. Had six points, three boards, three assists on Sunday. And look out if you're McKendry. A 10-0 run, a 12-2 run since the start of the half. The Vic Cove inbounds it, can go to the cup. Instead, he's fouled. Vickers picks it up. Now we'll see Alexander De Cove at the free throw line where he shoots 72%. Not a ton of opportunities this year from there, but you know, he's gotten them. He's been pretty good. Although, it looks like they're going to say it's not a shooting foul. This, this could be dangerous. Right now, George Sucks continues to you know, get in the ear of these officials. And he's off getting, the jacket comes. Yeah, on cue. But on that foul, they say that he wasn't in the gather, so instead they're going to inbound this one. It's on the floor. Here's Powell. Haven't seen a lot from him. Right wing three, and that's not even hitting. Almost stolen away. Now it'll be a foul against Victor Wabarocha. Pointing fingers, Wabarocha there. Could not get to the ball. Carson Parker, great job, able to stay with the possession and force the foul already. Shot. Just 35% from the floor, made just two three-pointers today. They've only made two three-pointers. Graham, I mean, it's just been different teams coming out and playing different ways, but when they've shot well from three, they're winning these games. No, uh, to echo what you said, I thought that they would need bench points. Um, so they had 25 in their only win, and the two losses, 12 bench points and eight bench points. They've only had five today, but they are turning it up on the defensive end, and they're adding it on offense. They... Have been able to score already 44. They only scored 51 in the championship against McKendry. Powell goes down hard, misses the shot. Parker gets the board, takes one up, and the ball never hit the rim. And now a foul called. Tensions Careful are here. flaring. Great hustle by Victor Wabarocha. Able to come away with that one. Force the jump ball, and we are going the other way. All to that guy's effect. Not Fuller, but Wabarocha. Guy with the goggles doing it on both sides of the ball here tonight. He has done absolutely a phenomenal job. Janir Harris to toss it in. Vickers picked up full court by DeVitt Cove. Great defensive pressure there from Alexander DeVitt Cove. Here's Fuller on the inside, working on Parker the feed. It's out of bounds. McKendry gets the ball. Just the fifth turnover today for Umslid. Done a great job taking care of the basketball. And if you're McKendry, you have to capitalize this. Just two points off those five Umsel off the four first Umsel turnovers. Now this the fifth. Can they do something? Eric Powell working there on. The best defender in the GLVC. Here's Vicentic. Nice, nice move. spin move. To the cup with the left hand. Need to see that a lot more over the next 12, 35. Well, that's his game. You know, can't settle for shots. Don't force the long twos or, you know, short threes. But instead, working to the bucket. He reminds me of Nikola Jokic, Nathaniel, with his footwork, with his spin moves. He doesn't seem like he'd be super quick and, you know, fast. But he is going towards the basket. The feet on the inside, the right block. Here's Wabarocha, lays it in in the harm. He's feeling it now. A chance at a three-point play. A chance to increase this lead to 15 points. Look at this. It just rolls right around and in. Using every part of the rim, but Wabarocha now... Eight points on the day, chance to make it nine. He's done it on the defensive side. Six rebounds, two assists, one steal, two blocks here in his 20 minutes out on the court. There's a there's a reason why he's on this Triton team and maybe about to come away with one of the all tournament team. He's looking bits. like one of those players that is not ready to finish his career. Oh no, a graduate student. Spent a couple years at Drury, was at Juco before that. And now laying everything out 
for Umsel. Seven to shoot, straight away three. That's not good either for McKendry, two of 12. Mirroring the numbers from downtown is Umsel. Well, what McKendry has done the last eight games and the biggest part of their eight game winning streak is they have shot the field goal. They have shot the ball extremely well. Field goal percentage over 50% now on the season as a team. And they just can't buy a bucket tonight, 32%. The cutting Wabarocha gets fouled again. Three point play, second time in a row. Put him at the line. Are you kidding me? And Triton fans are going to let him hear it as well. Look at this feed from. If you're watching on UNDTV's TV's YouTube, you just saw a promotion for UNDTV TV News. It's a newscast we have every Tuesday night. Of course, tonight we've got other things planned for content to go out on this channel. But you know, next week and on, tune in the news on UND TV's YouTube channel. And Victor Wabarocha, if you have plans for next Tuesday, might want to cancel them. Might be going to Evansville. How about that? A three for Milos Vicentic. He does not want to. Not so fast. Does not want to cancel his plans. He's planning on heading down to Evansville. That's a great shot from Vicentic. And that is that's what they need. That's their third three pointer. Need more of those, you know, confident looking shots. See if he can play some good defense. Fuller tough shot is fouled. Did you see much contact there? I mean, I think that in the air, he kind of on the readjustment, Fuller was able to force some contact, and I think that's why the whistle blew, maybe the contact on the body. But credit the big guy, able to move his feet and stick with Isaiah Fuller. I mean, you don't even see guards being able to stick with Fuller, so percentage able to lock him up there for a little bit, but Fuller eventually getting the better of him. See if he can knock down the pair. Hits the first. Such a good free throw shooter is Isaiah Fuller. He's just such a good shooter in general. Finishing the conference top 10 in scoring. Led the team in scoring. Second in rebounds. He just does it all for the squad. And of course he's coming off a tough game though. Just nine points against Ferris State. You know and Cisse working the glass again off the free throw miss able to bring that one in the golden jerseys are everywhere pulling in every 50 50 ball every rebound it's beyond me how this team only went 11 and 9 in the glvc conference because when you look down up and down the list nathaniel we've been saying they do everything extremely well these have been two polar opposite seasons to get yeah. them to this point how about umsel starting 14 and 1 then they came to this building played UND. Since that game when they lost to the Hounds in a ranked matchup, they kind of went on a slide. Finished off the season really on a on a losing skid, but they turned it on when they needed to, entered the tournament. How about that block from Zerlini in transition? Powell. And he's called with a charge. Sanquist does a good job on defense. But how about this? Ended the regular season losing... You know, one of their final six games. Winning just one of those final six, I beg your pardon. And, you know, they've now won four of their last five, including making it to the TLVC Conference Championship, Midwest Regional Championship. This team is turning it on when they need to. For McKendry, though, they started super slow. Then they went on a huge, scorching hot streak at the end of the season. They've now won eight straight coming into this one. Well, you know, dare I say they're like a blue blood. They know how to play in March like Duke, Kentucky, Michigan State. They're extremely coached well. Bob Sunvold knows what he's doing. The defense is what wins you championships. They do that well. You can look this one over at the replay center if you want. How about Cissé, a tough hack at the eye of Bryson Boltman. Going to say it wasn't anything too crazy. They're not going to look it over. Definitely could have thought if it was flagrant or not, but... Said they'll say it was inadvertent, so give McKendry the ball to inbound. How important are these next few minutes here for the Bearcats? I mean, oh, I mean, extremely important. Vicente just picked it up. Now he scored five points here in the second half. He's trying to get going. He's knocked down his last two field goal attempts, and he's calling for the ball here. He and Bryson Boltman is what's going to drive this offense. They need it. To the cup goes Zerlini, and he drops it in. And Boltman picks up his third assist of the day. That was a wonderful cutoff ball, ball by, by Zellini. And an even better find, Boltman. Credit the pass and the shot to him. 
Cutting the lead down. They need more of that. What they really need, though, is a stop here on defense. And the Tritons going to waste all the time they possibly can. Tritons have led by as many as 18. The lead is at 14 right now. Like you said, they're just going to take their time, look for a good shot, see if they can increase that number. Junior Harris kicks it out. Here's a long two. Fuller so good at these, he does not need a rim. And you see Fuller guarded by Vicentich. You know, Bob Sunvold has done an outstanding job. They have made it a point to switch Vicentich on defense, make him work. Fuller's gotten the better of him. Meeks from three, that's a no-go. Still just three of 14 from downtown. McKendry really struggling. Both teams are in that category. you think that'd be the difference here. If McKendry could get hot like they had, I mean, right. on 10 made threes, they shot lights out on Sunday. A Cisse, nice lob to the bucket. If, if McKendry could just get hot from three, they'd be in this game. But I'm still just doing better making their twos, and each team struggling from downtown. Makes double team. He walks with it. Well, the Tritons on defense, I mean, they're doing something really interesting. They're allowing the ball movement, which McKendry just hasn't been. A nice lead for the Tritons, McKendry. Of late, trying to get back in this one, but Umsel, they're starting to build themselves. A lot of cushion here. Head coach George Suggs for the Bearcats. Not the happiest out there on the floor. Well, you know, McKendry was able to cut into the lead. They cut it down to 14. That's as close as it's been, you know, here since a few minutes ago. And you see a quick turnover. George Suggs says, let's run. Let's score some points here. We knew it would be only a matter of time before DeVitko got the best of Vickers. He's yeah. been playing such pesky defense in the full court. Now Zerlini's going to inbound it. Gets it to DeVitko. See if he can turn some defense into offense. Calls for a vicentage screen. Boltman, Euro step, and he drops it in. That's beautiful. That was a determined Bryson Boltman. He just said, get out of my way. Surprised there. You know, honestly, it could have been a, a, an offensive foul called there on there, on the, on the Boltman there. Fullman, pardon, Fuller nearly drew it. No whistle. And that'll be Umsel ball as Zerlini tried to corral it and ended up knocking it out of bounds. So second life for the Tritons. Today, Umsel out-rebounding the Bearcats by five. Call that one aboard. You can say six. As Cisse gets it knocked away. Vicentich has to try to track it down. A chance here to Vitkov, sees some room and has to kick it out. Boltman standing alone in the corner. Let's see if they can get it to him. Instead, Powell the step back. No, nothing hitting for Eric Powell the second in a travel. That'll be McKendry ball. Just a bad break for Umsel as they got possession there but walked with it. Brings a timeout. Got to be pretty happy with the way his team has played to this point, although of late, I mean, McKendry's done a good job playing great defense, turning it into offense. They're chipping they away. Two turnovers for Umsel in the first half. Already six here in the second half through the first 12 and a half or so minutes. Quick three, right wing, he's hitting everything. Milos, Vicentich, 13 points. Wow, they called that a two. Let's see if they, if they change it. They called a two on the floor. They might have to review that one. I looked to like a three to me. For now, it will remain a two, but like you said, Vicentich has gotten going here, and it was just a matter of time. He gonna, they're going to need more of that, though. Cisse saves it. Playing jackpot, and right now it's DeVitko who wins it and gets a couple on the other end. And here come the Bearcats, down to 12. Seven minutes to go, plenty of time. They force some stops here. Now make it nine Umsel turnovers. Going back to that Vicentich, what looked like a three. His foot was on the line. The beauties of a YouTube stream. Popped it up on the monitor. Went and looked back and his, his, his toe was on the line. It probably wears size 15. If he wore size 14, it would have been good. But who cares? He gets two on the other end. And now it's been all McKendry. It's a 10-point game. A 6-0 run since the last timeout. 8-0 overall. And look at this. Let's call that one. We got a little overambitious up here. See, it's a player can't make a three-pointer in this arena tonight. Even the ones that look good, they're twos. 
three for 15 for McKendry from behind the arc. The rebounding, though, going in Umsel's favor. McKendry trying to crash the boards and change that notion. They're doing a better job here, but they need more of it. Still down 10. Umsel right at their season average in rebounds per game. We still have six and change to go here. Cissé corrals it. Here's Fuller. Great defense to catch up. Looked like they could have been a step behind. That's been the big thing here. Here's another three. And the conference's best three-point shooter. Graham, you and I saw it firsthand. Eight of 11 from downtown in the GLVC quarterfinals. Sandquist can get hot, but there he's off target. 0 for 3 on the day from deep. Really? Vicentich, this one is a 3. Count it! My friend, we got a ball game. Just like that, seven points separate these two squads. The fourth time they've played. It was 55-37. Look at the score now. It's 11 straight here on the drive. Trying to stop the run. They can't. They're going to foul. And that was a, that was a good call. Vicente just bumping Cissé there on the block. Might have threw a couple elbows. Stops the play, but... Credit Vicentich, awesome job being able to get himself going. Never lost confidence. Now three of five from behind the arc, six of 12. You know, he was missing everything. You look down, he's still 50% on the day. How often do you see big men, six foot seven, right. 220? You know, your post player shooting so well from three is the front end of a one on one missed. That's tough. I mean, you got to hit those. He say misfires. And a dead ball because the ball didn't hit the rim, so. McKendry takes it out of bounds. And I wonder if Bob Sunvold will wear the suit and tie if they make it to the championship of the tournament. Coach Suggs trying to make sure nobody finds out the answer to that one. Is he's out here trying to figure this one out? Corral on his bench. Is we're going to talk this one over. Eric Powell getting going. Bryson Boltman getting going. Vicentich, everything rolling. The fans are electric now. Here in Nixon Hall, McKendry trying to make a comeback. Chance to cut it to five with a couple free throws here, but got to be careful, just a one and one. From the stripe, he got it. Next one can make it a 13 to nothing run. Just like that, Graham. Just like that, this squad getting back into it. We were ready to crown... Umsel, the champions of the Midwest. McKendry has other plans. 13 0 the run. Boltman, a big reason why. Vicentich, the other one. Each player has 17 points right now. And now the small McKendry contingent getting loud. And Wabarocha enters back into the game a couple dead balls ago. Let's see if that has some effect. His points, rebounds, and defense has. An outstanding. Fuller chirping on the floor, trying to lead this squad, get him set up. Here's Harris on the drive. Gets it poked away, it's a steal. Ten Umsel turnovers. Boltman walks it over. Gives it off to Vicentich, step back three, no. Ooh, that one would have brought the house down. Yeah, it absolutely would have. Five point game, under five to go in the game. Wabarocha hands it off. Here's in right from the logo. David Cove playing tight defense. Eight to shoot. Fuller needs a good bucket. Instead, they get it to the corner. Wabarocha from three, and it's off target. Zerlini to Vicentic. Milos Vicentic playing so well from Belgrade, Serbia. He's a junior. He's working on the inside. Gets some tough points in the paint. How about it's a one-bucket game. How about this kid? He, how about the guts? Takes on the best Umsel defender. Takes Isaiah Fuller. Spin move. Dribble. You know why? Because it's a three-point game. Nathaniel Finch, Graham Shear with you. Down on the sideline is Giselle Valentin. This is the Midwest Regional Finals. Four minutes to go. The winner moves on to the Elite Eight. Down in Evansville a week from today. What a final we're going to have here.
I cannot wait. Down the stretch here. Can't wait to see what happens. Ooh. Whistle blows there. We've seen a lot of those. It'll put Umsel in the double bonus. In the second foul today on Davidkov, he's played excellent defense. That time just wasn't able to hang with in right quite as well. In right, the freshman, 79%, maybe the two biggest free throws of his life to this point. It's the first. Clutch. Now, maybe not the two biggest free throws. He did win the 5A state championship over in Missouri last year. Probably shot some free throws there. He's got to be right up there with it, though. But two clutch ones from the freshman. Boltman on the run, down by five again. Wow, what a Devitkov, pass. Devitkov, no way. He got it. What a time for a triple Alexander Devitkov, his first of the tournament. How about that pass? Caleb Zerlini caught it midair. Touch pass to the corner. Davidkov pays it off. Two-point game. Wow. Wabarocha guarded by Boltman. He wants to shoot this. Oh, he wants it so bad. He launches it up. In Almost and out. Put it in. That would have been beautiful. Instead, McKendry a chance to tie or take the lead. Four early lead changes, nothing since then, and a foul. Boltman at the line for a chance to tie it up. We thought the Bearcats were dead in the water just a few minutes ago. Down 18, and they were just treading water. They could not get anything going, and now here they go. Chance to tie for Bryson Boltman. Nothing you want. If you're, if you're Coach Suggs, you are extremely happy with the Bearcats and how they've played in if you're Umsel and Bob Sunvold, I'm not really sure how you answer. They have got punched in the mouth. I'm not sure how they're going to respond. This next free throw would make it a 20-4 to four run. How about that? This team, like you said, dead in the water. And now they're a single away from tying it up. And they do. Brand new ball game. The final two minutes and 50 seconds. Of the Sweet 16, you could call it. Winner moves on to Evansville next Tuesday. Here's Fuller. He drives in. Wabarocha almost loses it. Seven to shoot. Goes up tough, and he nice got it. finish. Two players on the floor, but Wabarocha give him a pair. You know, Wabarocha made that look easy, but coming from underneath the baseline, underneath the hoop, that was not at all easy, and Wabarocha, Wabarocha makes that one look easy. A tough finish. Boltman on the drive. Goes up, doesn't count. That's an offensive foul. Boltman hopping around does not agree. He is irate, but I honestly think that was a good call when he went through the step through. I think he used that off arm to push with his left, got to the basket. More importantly, the fourth foul called against Bryson Boltman. In the running for the GLBC player of the year this season. And he gets called there. He's a foul away from an early trip to the bus. And obviously you got to keep him on the floor down too. George Suggs needs his guys. Boltman has been their best player all season long. Vicentich right there with them. They need both of them out there if they want a chance. Harris trying to make it a two-bucket game. Here's Fuller. Isaiah Fuller setting up a screen. He'll drive, kicks it out. Janir Harris, air ball. The rebound for Boltman. It's a big one. He's got nine boards today. He's one away from a double-double. 90 seconds. Davitkov playing some very high-level minutes right now. This is March Madness. Boltman switches hands. He loses it. Steal Wabarocha. Madness, I tell you, Graham. That might have been the best defensive play I've seen this entire Midwest Regional. He was, 
I'm not sure Wabarocha had a chance there, and Bullman crosses back over the poke away. Wabarocha uses those long arms and inside of wow. 60 seconds to go. Five to shoot. He walked with it. Umsel took their time and ultimately will give the ball to the Bearcats. How about this nine Umsel second half turnovers? McKendry has locked up the Tritons on defense this half. They have to close it out well. The finishing moments here of this seven game tournament at the University of Indianapolis and a foul. This one's huge. They could foul out Boltman right now. They're gonna talk this one over. Instead, it'll go against Janir Harris. He tried to plead his, his case there. Instead, Harris now has four. He's one away from heading to the showers. How about Bryson Boltman, 19 points. He's been a perfect six of six from the free throw line today. What more could you ask from your star? Also nine boards and he hits the front end. And Bullman now 17 for 17 for the line, from the line this tournament. I don't wanna jinx him, but wow. Yep. You did not, he's too good to be jinxed. Look at him there, it's a tie game. I don't expect him to miss anytime soon. Timeout call, 13 seconds between clocks. Umsel with the ball when we return. This is the NCAA Midwest Regional Final. Coming in as the number eight seed, I don't think anybody thought that they had a chance, but they, I mean, nobody thought they had a chance in the GLVC tournament. Look as where that got seed, them. Right, ran the table, beat this Umsel squad. Won that one running away. Just a few possessions remain in this tournament. Fuller's got it, back to Enright. Huge minutes for the freshman. 30 left in the game, 15 left on the clock. Gets it inside to Harris, to near Harris on Milos Vicentic. Tries to get it to Fuller, Fuller lays it Big in, my goodness! Shot. Isaiah Fuller, 26 points. And a quick timeout, that'll be the last one of the game. Let's stay right here though. Graham, what are we gonna see from George Suggs' squad. Ooh, I mean, you have to go with, I mean, one of your two best players, but all tournament team. Look what? for a screen to get one of them, either Boltman or Vicentic. You see him standing at the top of the key. Look for a screen to get one of them open going up top. You see Boltman, here we go. Here we go. This is it, 11 to shoot, loses the ball, stolen away in a foul. What are they gonna say here? Looks to be against the defense. New life for the Bearcats in the double bonus. Third foul from Wabarocha. Boltman at the line, he could tie it. Again, the chance to tie. And you know, that was good defense, but on the strip, definitely a foul. Umsel fans obviously not happy, but I think it was the right call. Boltman definitely got slapped across the wrist on the steal and the reach and sends him to the line. Wow. How big is that? That's his first missed free throw. That is monumental. He honestly, I mean, has to try and make this one. And then if you make it, you foul right away. If you miss it, you still are going to foul right away because there's not enough time. Definitely don't have the size to try to miss one here. He hits it. Now you play about two to three seconds of great defense. Hey, Boltman just checked out. Wow, with those four fouls, that's honestly smart because they have to foul here, Nathaniel. Carson Parker comes in. Two to three seconds of good defense and then you foul. From the corner, they're doing just that and the foul came. It's a one point game. My goodness, I'm still at the line. They're gonna have two chances here. They make them both. McKendry needs a three or else. And who else do you want at the line besides your star player? Has 26 points in the night. Isaiah Fuller shooting 77% from the free throw line. Chance at a berth in the Elite Eight. He misses that one too. How about that? The pressure free throws. Fuller. This season, 77% from the line, and he just misses a huge one. 
And now a three can win you the game. Make or miss. I would not shoot the three. I would go for the tie. If he makes it quickly down the floor, go for two. Give it to Vicentich or Boltman. They only made five threes today. I think it's a good strategy. Seven to shoot. Boltman running across. Five seconds to tie it. Kicks it out for the win. No. Air ball, no. To the ground goes Erlini. And the Tritons celebrate. The Umsel Tritons a scrum in the middle of the floor. Are you kidding me?